Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back. Um, this is a long overdue video and the reason is simply because I've been putting it off and putting it off uh, because this is probably the most difficult part of any kind of workout routine or, or healthy living and that's because it's the diet part of the whole lifestyle. Um, what makes it so difficult is because with all the research that I've done I see a lot of contradicting things, uh, a lot of fad type diets, a lot of diets controlled by uh, special interest groups even, groups that stand to really earn money off of people's diets, which is terrible. And it allows for competing researchers and reports to really contradict themselves. So um, that on top of the diet is actually very personal with people. Uh, what a diet that works for one person's not always going to work for another. Um, and so with this video, what I'd like to offer you guys is some general tips with your diet. And then after that, I'll kind of explain the more specific diet that I'm going to try to follow. Um, so getting right into it, uh, the biggest thing that I would recommend anyone trying to eat better um, is to keep in mind that you are trying to satisfy your body and not just your mind whenever you are uh, picking out what you want to eat. And what I mean by that is don't get something simply because it, it tastes good and you know it tastes good. Um, prime example, sweets, you know, mo most people like cakes and brownies and all that stuff. Well, that stuff tastes fantastic, but there's really no benefit to your body whatsoever eating that all the time. So with that being said, um, definitely know that whenever you're eating, you're not eating just to uh, satisfy a craving or uh, just because you're stressed and a lot of people are stress eaters and so keep in mind that whenever you eat you need to treat that as fuel for your body fuel for your muscles and have that for your body to use whenever you are working out and trying to uh, get in better shape also don't be afraid to try different things just because something has a reputation of not being good like Brussels sprouts or broccoli and things that are just kind of on TV and stuff as being bad or whatever, tasting bad, uh, don't be afraid to at least try it. And I personally have a tough time with that. I'm a very picky eater, um, but I'm coming around the more I've been trying to uh, do these videos and live better myself. So definitely try different things. Um, the next tip that I like to offer is a portion control. Um, and I live in the South, so this is actually kind of a, a difficult issue for me. Um, and that's because we are always taught from when we were kids to clear your plate, to make a happy plate, if you will. Also, we are in the habit of loading up our plates with a whole bunch of food, like at family dinners and stuff like that. So it's definitely important to keep in mind the portions and the amount of food that you are eating. That way, whenever you're making your healthy decisions, you're still not doing har more harm than good by overeating. And that really kind of leads into the next point, which is eating too much of one thing is essentially bad for you. Eating too much vegetables can be harmful. Eating too much fruit, eating too much desserts, even eating too much protein. All of that stuff can have adverse effects on your body if you do it the wrong way and eat too much of it. So definitely keep in mind the different portions of the types of food that you are eating. And, you know, don't overeat and don't overwhelm your body. And another big tip is whenever you're starting out with your diet plan, allow yourself a cheat day. It's very difficult to cold turkey any kind of habit that you have. So kind of allow yourself uh, a little leeway. Give yourself a cheat day. Uh, I know mine is typically on Thursdays or Fridays because that's when I uh, do my heavy cardio. And so if you don't give yourself a cheat day and you slip up down the line and you cheat, you're really discouraged and you're easier to just give up altogether once that happens. So give yourself that Thursday or Friday and, you know, go out and get something to eat that you're used to eating. And then as you get better with your diet and as time goes by and you're in the routine of eating better, kind of slowly trim those cheat days out. I still have cheat days. Um, instead of really a cheat day, I kind of have a cheat meal on my cheat day. So I'm slowly trying to uh, weed, the, weed those bad foods out. But um, I mean, I'm human. I like to eat fast food sometimes. I get lazy. I don't want to cook. So uh, I give myself that time to almost to kind of reset my mind and get back onto the healthy, uh, healthy eating train. 
with your cheat day though, don't go overboard. Like I said, uh, I have a cheat meal on my cheat day. You don't want to just uh, on your Friday or Thursday or whatever day you choose, you don't want to just pig out and just eat and eat and eat um, because then you're you're really hurting uh, yourself a lot. You're putting yourself behind the eight ball instead of kind of on par with it, if that makes any sense. The next tip I have is to plan your meals, not necessarily cooking it all on a Sunday and having your meals in, in Tupperware ready to eat each week or each night, but just to have a plan. Um, one of the biggest hurdles that I had this year with my diet was deciding what I'm going to eat. And so whenever it came down to it, a lot of time, <clears throat> a lot of times at dinner, I didn't really have anything prepared. And so I just said, you know, to hell with it. I'm going to get something quick and easy and something I know I like and would stop by Bojangles or, you know, a Taco Bell or something on the way home. Um, whereas whenever I started to meal plan a little bit better, I knew that I had stuff at home and I had an idea of what I was going to eat already. So that kind of takes a little bit of guesswork out of it. So definitely try to plan ahead a, a, some sort of meal for you know your breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or snack, or, or what have you. The last tip would be take small steps. I kind of alluded to that earlier. Uh, when you're starting out, you know you don't want to go overboard because then you're more likely to revert back to old habits. And then once that happens, you're more likely to just give up altogether. So uh, definitely just kind of ease into it um, initially. Uh, I kind of rushed into it whenever I first started and it backfired on me. So I can definitely speak with, from experience on this. And I definitely just recommend to uh, change out meals periodically when you start out and then just change out more meals and more meals as you go along. As far as the diet that I'm going to try to follow this next year, I've done a lot of research on this and kind of what I decided to do was to take a lot of the different books and reports and diets and advice from different people and kind of really see what the commonalities are between the between all of them. And so I looked at books, um, some of the fad books like uh, Eat Right for Your Blood Type was one. Uh, There's a book called Wheat Belly. Um, I even looked at like some of the older diets that I knew of, like the Atkins diet or the low carb diets and uh, just the different diet types to kind of get an idea of what these different professionals were saying. And I also consulted with my personal uh, physician and, and nutritionist and uh, my friends that are personal trainers to kind of get an idea of what diet I should really look towards uh, completing, I guess. The number one biggest thing that has been completely consistent across all boards is that gluten is your enemy. And you know, I, I really honestly thought that was a, a, just a fad thing. I thought that, you know, gluten-free was just another one of these kind of lose weight quick schemes and all that stuff. But actually doing that, all the research and especially in that book, uh, Wheat Belly. And I think, I want to say the author is Michael Davis. I'm not 100% sure on that. But either way, the book has fantastic information in it. It's very science-y, uh, a lot of science terms in it, so it's a little bit hard of a read at first, but um, he does kind of give you the general um, idea of why gluten is bad, and so I 100% recommend that. I could do a whole video on just gluten if uh, that was something you all were interested in hearing. I'd be glad to do that, but uh, gluten is very hard for me specifically to cut out. Uh, like I said, I'm from the South. And so we eat biscuits with almost everything. And so it's very hard to not, uh, to get out of my habits of eating bread specifically. Um, but that it gluten's in so much different types of food, uh, pastas, uh, bread, different types of sauces have gluten in it. It's just, it's very difficult to try to weed out, but there are a lot of gluten-free options out there. The second food surprisingly to me that is actually kind of bad for you is dairy products um and so i've been a huge milk drinker my entire life uh, i used to drink almost a glass a day and you know i would eat cheese and all this stuff and after doing some research on that there's a lot of different people that uh say that dairy is actually pretty bad for you and that's really because of the way that we're raising our cattle now and all the different types of uh, chemicals and whatnot that they use to treat the milk and uh, 
the types of food that the cows are eating and stuff like that. It's just, it doesn't translate well for your digestive system and causes issues uh, specifically with your intestines and where it used to be really good to drink milk um, because of the calcium and whatnot, it's actually kind of gotten uh, worse for you as time goes on and we try to mass produce all of these types of foods, which is another reason why gluten was bad because we're trying to uh, do all of these genetically modified foods where we can get, get a high yield of crop so we can disperse it in America. And it's not in the best interest of the people's health, it's how quickly they can make a dollar. So, so far we got gluten and dairy that's bad and then the obvious sugars, um, artificial sugars and sweeteners are definitely terrible for you but that is, I like to say, common knowledge. So specifically the diet that I'm going to follow is more along the paleo lines. What I've decided is uh, to do more of a protein and vegetable uh, meal. Unfortunately it requires me to learn how to cook which I'm working on. I'm getting different types of recipes from different uh, sources and, and trying out different recipes and so I'll hopefully uh, record some of those for y'all so you can get an idea of what I specifically am eating but generally I'm going to be eating beef, chicken, turkey, fish. I'm, I've never been much of a pork eater except for bacon obviously but unfortunately I'm even going to try to cut down on bacon as, as terrible as that sounds. And then my vegetables, I'm going to try more green vegetables. Like I said before, Brussels sprouts and broccoli is always even just look terrible to me, but I'm going to open up and, and try different things. And uh, as far as my snacks go, I'll eat more fruit, which I've already started doing that. Bananas, apples, uh, berries specifically, uh, grapes. So that'll replace the fat, the fatty chips and cookies and and crackers that I've been eating for snacks so that's gonna have a positive effect as well and before I forget one last thing uh, really listen to your body if you are eating something that has gluten in it and it doesn't affect you you know maybe it's not as bad for you so like I said uh, what works for me may not work for you and vice versa so if you eat something that doesn't agree well with your body uh, stop eating it that that's a sign that's your body telling you that you shouldn't be eating that, that your body can't handle that. So if you eat something and you get an upset stomach, if uh, you're having to go to the bathroom um, more often than you should, uh, if you have heartburn, like all of these different factors um, after you eat, just keep that in mind whenever you decide uh, what you're going to be eating. Uh, just keep in mind that your body should be able to handle, should be able to digest completely what you are eating so it passes through your system and so that the nutrients in that food gets absorbed into your body, into your muscles and bloodstream and, and what have you. How well that goes should be an indicator on how beneficial that food is to your system. Uh, so yeah, uh, that pretty much wraps this video up. Like I said, I'll be glad to do a more uh, extensive video into gluten, fr into the gluten-free um, information that I've found because it's very in-depth. So if you'd like to see that, uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you disagree, I'll leave a comment. If you need more information on anything that I've said, uh, please feel free to ask. Please feel free to share this video if you found any of the information helpful. And just remember that major changes start with minor steps and keep up the good work. That's good.